Hi everyone, welcome to Smallcast! <laughs> that milkshake bit was not planned, but uh, I am here with one of your hosts, Kiva Cat. I am also here with our other host, Roku! Hello, I'm Roku, sorry. <laughs> yes. And, and today we have Hayano here with us. Hayano, would you like to hello. say hello and tell us a bit about yourself? Hi, hello, I'm Hayano, uh, formerly Hayano Mulla, uh, but I stream sometimes i do animation i do art and uh yeah i'm just a fun loving vtuber who does fun loving things and makes really really bad jokes <laughs> <laughs> no you don't you make amazing jokes i don't know what you're talking about and then oh, yeah, she is a cow vtuber my... <laughs> yes i am moo moo you, you don't have to bump my ego any more than it is honestly every day i stream <laughs> on this platform it gets a little higher but yes, a after what happened with the intro, I do have a question. Is milkshakes actually your favorite drink? <laughs> or is something else your favorite? Um, honestly, like, this is gonna sound like such a bland answer, but I'm really just a water girl, honestly. I'm gonna level with you. Like, most of the time, I am just water. I do, I'm however, there with you. <laughs> gotta say, uh, like, taro-flavored bubble tea, mm. real good, real good. What about you, Roku? Uh, me? I, I'm i also... Uh, I'm a bubble tea girl, I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah! <laughs> I, I, I'm very much camp of water, but if I'm going for something flavored, it has to be hot chocolate. But it has to be like really thick, foamy hot chocolate, not the water with a bit of cocoa powder in it. Hmm. So it like, mind boggles me how people okay. do that. Yeah, I don't get how that's good at all. <laughs> huh. But people have their own tastes, I guess. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, another question for you, Hayana. I'm just wondering, um, how did you come, like, become like a cow VTuber? Like, what was the inspiration for that? Oh, this is a interesting story. Um, oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've technically been a PNG tuber since 2016. Oh wow, that's um, quite a long time. I'm, yeah, I've appeared. I I was a part of a a, a small P a, a group of people, and it wasn't really PNG PNG tubing back then. It was just mm -hmm. a we had like pictures to use for ourselves because we were not comfortable on webcam. Uh... Um, but then. I want to say in 2019, 2020, one of my friends who actually had this model before me, I'm very open about that, um, kind of didn't fall in love with VTubing. So I was like, you know what? I'm too much of a perfectionist to like ever like be completely satisfied with a design. So I kind of inherited the look and oh. I feel like it took a lot of that pressure off. Oh. Makes a lot and of so sense. So you just kind of live through that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it felt really nice um, finding a character, like, finding a pre-existing character that someone had that hadn't really had any lore inside of it or, like, any kind of, like, real kind of, like, body to it and just kind of breathing that into it. Like, to me, it's never really mattered how much or what I've looked like or whatever appearance I take on. So I feel it felt like it was kind of... I want to say like a destiny kind of moment, but like a mm. moment where I was like, yeah, I've wanted to do this for a long time. And well, it's not something I inherently have like a load of time for, but I'm passionate about it. So why not? I, I really like hearing about that because it feels like the exact opposite route that I went. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have had so many iterations on my model at this point, because mm. I'm like, you never satisfied with it. Yep. That it's just kind of the polar opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> I, I, I think really feel that. <laughs> I think it's because we're all like inherently in some way artists. Mm -hmm. Because whether we're like entertaining or whether we're like uh, like actually like making stuff, we we are all inherently artists as content creators. So we have that streak of as we change, we want what who we are to change with us. 
I always find that endlessly fascinating to hear about from people. Very much so. <laughs> yeah, uh, secretly, well, it's not a secret. I'm like a perfectionist. <laughs> so I don't think that's with any of us. Something goes wrong, it's like the end of the world. <laughs> I felt that. I feel that in my bones. My poor bones. <laughs> I mean, that, that kind of goes into the time management almost, where it's like, the what do you do when something goes wrong? How do you deal with that? Oh, God. It's... Oh, yeah, I, I think it's a lot of expectation management, I think. Mm. I think uh... a big part of, like, time management and, like, perfectionism is managing your own expectations and being real realistic with them because you can like push yourself to the absolute brink to get something going and get something done but if you're like if you're like pushing yourself too far you're not gonna be able to sustainably keep that up and that's something i learned the hard way with v2 man. very much learned it the hard way did you give us like a scenario that like you had to go through at least for like the beginning because I I'm yeah. I haven't even done a proper debut yet. <laughs> yeah, quite honest with you, like I I struggle so much with it just because like I've seen everybody else do their debut. They put so much mm -hmm. effort towards it, and I want to put the same amount of effort towards it, if not more. And then it just mm -hmm. never ends up happening because there's just so many steps to it. So like, how like for you, how was it like to get to like successful debut? Because you've debuted, right? Yes, I did debut, yeah. Um, I think the culture behind debuting is really interesting, so I mm. wanted to, to do it at, at least once, but it, it wasn't like one of my main focuses, I'm gonna level with you. I, I it, was, it was one of those things that I was like, I'd like to do it because I've basically got the model, it's been rigged, like everything on that side was already done for me in terms of I was just kind of rolling into into the into everything. We so like the simplicity. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I was like, okay, I'm gonna give a debut a go, and on the day I was planned to debut, uh, my YouTube account because I was planning to do it over on YouTube, um, just disabled live streaming. Oh. So. Uh, I, I had been kind of like building up to it for months and months and months on end where I was like, yeah, I'm going to debut at this day. And I kind of like built it up in my brain because I was like, this is how it's going to go. I have a PowerPoint ready. It's going to be fun. And I think when that kind of went wrong, I kind of like really hyper drived in to wanting to be like what the ideal in quotation marks people mm. have of a vtuber by kind of forcing it to work but inherently it didn't and then i burnt <laughs> myself out oh, real no. hard <laughs> um so yeah i mean it, it didn't go great but i think that's what i mean by managing expectations because now i'm a lot more of a i kind of look things like hey i'm doing this part-time like there's no way i can manage full-time at the minute i'm doing this and now that I, I'm going into it like that and I'm kind of like being more loose with it, I guess. I'm having a lot more fun. I'm making a lot more content I'm actually enjoying. And Aww. yeah, you know, it's one of those. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of have to go through it to learn. <laughs> yeah. Plus everything is gonna be scuffed is one of the things that I find myself repeating a lot. Just because it's so true with VTubers and absolutely everything that goes on in this space. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, there was a meme that went around and it just said, <laughs> VTubers equal stuff, scuff. And I'm yep. just like, yeah, yeah, nope, that's so accurate. <laughs> like, there's just no way to go around it. We're not, Something is always going to break. <laughs> most people are just normal, everyday people. There's no agency running by us. There's no, mm -hmm. you know... Like, we're just normal people uh, VTubing. <laughs> yep. I cannot tell you the number of times I have started my stream with my mic muted. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't matter if I've made the same mistake countless times, it still happens. <laughs> okay, for me, it's different. It's my filter is still on for my reverb, so everyone's hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> They're like, are you in a tunnel? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what, what about you, Hyanna? What is, what is your most common scuff? <laughs> Oh god, so I, I recently got an iPhone and like, I because like I've been doing webcam tracking up until now, so like mm. I, I figuring out how to do like how to get it to connect was like an entire thing. It was a, yeah. it was an entire thing. And then I, I realized that I had issues with like, if I turn too far, sometimes my model just kind of glitches out of existence completely. So like, what? that's that's a, that's something I had to hold up. Like... Hold up! I need a sample of this. <laughs> so, so the fun thing is, like I said, I I, I like I, I I said earlier, I I didn't actually know my artist or my rigger, my my wonderful parents. I didn't know them personally. So one of my first like interactions with them was like, "Hi, um, so that's an issue." <laughs> I felt so bad because it's like the only other time I messaged them was like, "Hi, I have inherited this. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, hello." And they were like, "Oh yeah, cool. That's fine with us." And then I just did not speak to them for a while because I don't know how to harbor a, a relationship really. Because like I, I had no idea what to do with it. I'm gonna level with you. I don't know how you're meant to interact in that situation. So my next message was like six months later, like, hey, <laughs> her talk behind my ears. Please help. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. And I, I, I am actually going to address chat here because Squee called out something that is very commonly scuffed with my stream and I want to give a little bit more context because the only thing he has said is or without tits. <laughs> For those that don't know, tits is Twitch integrated throwing system. <laughs> it is a program that I commonly forget to pull up on Thursdays when I stream on Twitch. <laughs> I, I am not literally forgetting a part of my body. I am not that forgetful <laughs> yet. <laughs> Imagine like every every stream you had to individually enable each body part. No. <laughs> I really know. I, I would forget so much. I, I'm so lucky that like I just have my wings that I can enable, and that's kind of it, and I don't normally have them on. They're so pretty. They are so pretty. Yep. I, I'm very happy with them. They are basically just Minecraft Elytra, though. It's literally the texture. We love that. We love that. Yes. But to, to get back onto time management as a topic, because I, I think we we all tangented hard there. A little bit. A tiny yes. bit. It's fine. A little, little scuff, a little tangent. I ain't all been worried about. <laughs> yep. So, so what, what are some tactics that you use to keep yourself on track with time management? Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in the Pomodoro method. Um, like, either setting a 25 minute timer and then taking a five minute break or a 15 minute timer and a 10 minute break and then you do four of those in a row and then you take like an hour break or like however much you can do and that kind of with that with like um like prioritizing my tasks in fun and versus which ones are most important to be done kind of melding those two together because I have, a, I, I have autism, ADHD, very open with, about that. Um, so when I'm doing to-do lists, it's really important for me to consider what I can do without going into like hardcore brain paralysis mode. <laughs> or, and then also like what's reasonable in a chunk of time that I'm not going to hyper fixate and then push my body too much. So yeah, the Pomodoro method is something that I always tout to people i if you've heard me say it once you've heard me say it <laughs> a bajillion times mm. um i think body doubling helps for me a lot with time management 
Like if I'm doing something that absolutely needs to get done and I'm body doubling while I'm doing it, I am like, I want to say like 80% more likely to get it done in the time period that it needs to get done. Can you explain what body doubling is? So body doubling is something a lot of people do absolutely subconsciously. Um, it's using uh, like either like a stream of someone doing like like working on something or like working on art or like even just gaming and then having them in the background or to the side while you are working on something yourself. Mm. So you can either do that physically in person with someone, which is the traditional version of body doubling that most people recognize, but it's becoming more common for people to use like streams and YouTube videos mm. and all kinds of stuff to kind of you do like a, a almost body doubling in that way. Yeah, so that, that's why I've seen the like study with me streams and stuff. Yes, absolutely. They are like a classic example. And it a couple of years um, ago, like stuff like that just didn't really exist. So it's really ooh. cool to see it like more like normalized. But the term isn't exactly being normalized with it, which is unfortunate. So yeah. there's still a lot of confusion about what it means. Actually, yeah. that kind of reminds me of something I started to do in my server to be a little bit more productive. Uh, it's called, we, we made a channel and we called it Accountability Buddy. And mm. people would just come in and just hang out. But also, so they had the aspect of they can socialize, but for the most part, they're working. So it just kind of keeps like like a passionate workflow, if that makes sense. <laughs> yep. Yep. That is that is classic body doubling, like in a in a online situation that I've seen a lot and I'm I'm so like genuinely glad that like communities are starting to do it now like you have no idea how happy that makes me to hear like <laughs> do that in your server that's genuinely really cool I actually didn't realize that I had been doing that as well until you mentioned it Roku because <laughs> oh. I, I have uh, work sessions with Atami where I'll be modeling and he'll be working on music mm. <laughs> so it's not even the same project we're both just chilling in a call working on stuff Mm -hmm. Well, I just realized uh, some people just want to hang out, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just want somebody there, but also be productive at the same time, because it just mm -hmm. helps kind of like share like the workflow energy, because then if somebody wants to like just suddenly give up on their work because they're like, ah, you know, this is so frustrating. Other person can kind of like cheer them up, be like, hey, you're doing great so far. You're like already halfway through. Yeah. I think you can go yeah. through with the rest of it. Plus, it always helps to have a person there that you can turn to and ask, like, does this look right? Yeah. <laughs> is, is, is this a thing? <laughs> and yeah, like, they're works. actually there to not just be nice to you, but, like, they're there to, like, actually help you and, like, finish off <laughs> what you're doing. Yeah, that's exactly it. That is exactly <laughs> it. <laughs> Because some, right. sometimes a friend will just be kind of a little too nice about it. Like, oh, hey, you can take your friend. You can stop what you're doing. No, accountability buddy says you get it done. <laughs> you can't get work done. <laughs> we, so love I, we love that. We love that. I have found that uh, with some of those, because I, I know, uh, like, I'm one of those people that will zero in on a project and forget about stuff. And I've seen other people do the same. And sometimes you need that accountability buddy to be like, Okay, no, you've been at this for six hours. Go get food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the people yes. who are way too distracted and need to take a break. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. I have this person in my server. And like, <laughs> it's just like, I haven't eaten yet. I'm like, bro, then go eat. <laughs> what are you yep. doing? <laughs> And I, 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 I will admit, I am one of those people where it's like, okay, I, I've been at this for four hours and it's about time for food, but I just need to get the physics on this hair right first. Yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, no, go take your break. What is wrong with you? <laughs> but it doesn't feel right to leave it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think that's another thing people struggle with because they're like, oh, if I stop here, like my entire workflow is going to be ruined. But yeah. it's like, it's realizing the fact of like, this is your workflow. You know it like the back of your hand. Maybe they'll take you a couple of minutes to like get back into it. But <laughs> you did this. This is all yours. You, you can, you, you know yourself, you know? 
Mm. Yeah. I think it's having that confidence to be able to step away. And I think, like like I said originally, Pomodoro really helps with that because not only do you have a timer beeping down your ear about time to go stretch, you need to go stretch, go stretch. There's also like, hey, oh, wow, I actually did work solidly for, for that amount of time. Mm. It's nice. I think uh, what's also really important is uh, what you're actually doing during your breaks. Because if I'm doing something really distracting and interesting during my break, I'm not coming back. <laughs> I'm not coming back to my workflow. And that's just because I get distracted just so easily and it's so interesting and I just don't want to go back yeah. to it, you know? Yeah. There's a level of how much you need to be like strict with yourself, but also there is a level of you have to reflect on stuff as well like if if you are doing that a lot sure maybe then be like okay i need to be a bit more strict with myself and re-engage with the tasks that i want to re-engage with but like we're human we're not meant to work for like a bajillion hours on end as much as our capitalistic society may say otherwise uh, <laughs> we're not meant to so if if you if you find something that brings you joy i'm a big proprietor of do the thing that brings you joy and then come back mm. to it and you'll feel better for it mm. because sometimes like a five minute break is is not enough of a mental load break for you yeah you know that definitely makes sense <laughs> Though, um, is there anything I, you do personally? Oh, sorry. No, it's fine. Uh, you, you, there... you can go ahead. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I was just wondering is, if there's anything you do personally, like during your breaks, that you feel like help you still keep the workflow, but also take the tension out of like yourself. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Um, I'm very much of the believer that you should try to have a place where you commit to doing work and that's really hard for for vtubers because like like they do work at their like computer and then they're also having their free time usually being video games which is also at their com computer which is why i say try and either set like a like a period of time in the day that you 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 kind of schedule and you make that like own routine for yourself of this is my these are my work hours or if you can't do that try and like what i do sometimes is if i'm trying to convince myself that i'm in a workspace and it is a workspace i'll like hang up a poster or something that will be in my line of vision so that <laughs> subconsciously my brain starts associating when that poster is up on the wall <laughs> it is work time and the brain is such a fickle thing because like small little indicators like that can really help you build a routine and for neurodivergent people routines are the way to to kind of like start like kind of like tackling it because especially if like you've got other things to worry about like chronic fatigue or physical health issues you want to try and minimize the the challenges your own brain is giving you as much as mm. you physically can so that's one thing i do another thing i do is when i am taking a break i stretch hydrate mm. And I try and listen to what my body needs. If my shoulder is hurting, I'll be like, do I need to take a, a elongated stretch break? Do I need to apply a patch or something? <laughs> do I need to unshrimp more while I'm working? I'm Hot looking bitch. at everyone. <laughs> I, I actually threw it in my back when you said that. <laughs> You know, your first point was actually so ironic because I do the exact same thing every single time I want to be productive. I, I don't need glasses, but I actually have like a blue, like a blue <laughs> light glasses that I put on every single time I want to be productive. Yes. And like, there's absolutely yes. no reason why I need to do it. I don't need to do it. 
but I put it on anyways to be productive and every single time it just helps me be productive. Yeah, it's like it genuinely the the placebo effect is such a big thing for like helping like your brain just associate things because our brains love making connections like so much. We love connecting one thing to another and just ba 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 ba. It helps our neurons <laughs> fire. I'm like not a science guy, but I, I've I've tried and tested a lot of methods in my long, desperate, academic life just to have a day's peace from my <laughs> non-stop chattering brain. So while uh, it's not a hundred percent thing, but I I would say give it a shot. Give it a shot. Hmm. What's the worst yeah. that can happen? That makes a lot of sense, and I've I've realized as well subconsciously I was doing the same to a certain extent. Because uh, one of the things that I have on specifically for like streaming and stuff is a uh, light that is basically directly pointed at my face so my webcam can see my facial expressions better. Yeah. And it's one of those things that it's like I only have it on when I'm doing this stuff. So it has mentally put me in that space whenever I see that light on. Oh. Yeah. When you start looking for connections of like little habits and little rituals you do in your life, you never stop picking up on them. And like, you can abuse them to your own benefit. And I, I, I say, abuse them. Use them as much as you need to. Life is hard enough. We need to take shortcuts sometimes. Yep. I agree. <laughs> Though I, I, I do wonder, uh, cause, uh, Roku, I don't believe I've heard any of your specific time management things that you have either. Hmm. Um, well, for me, uh, do you want like a general concept or like just things? Just that... like a, a, a habit that you have for time management that is different from the ones that Iono had said, if there's any. Mm, for me, the thing that I feel like is a huge part of my time management the other little things i feel like i get done relatively easily like for example if i need to um just do something for stream usually i'm always there an hour before it's just ingrained in me like an hour before stream i'm already prepping i'm already there doing all the little things making sure everything's ready and then by the time stream happens it's usually all ready and if it's not oh my god it's chaos <laughs> yeah um but the thing I feel like is also just super important generally is just making time for socializing because networking is really important, but also building relationships with the people you network with too. Because like, yeah, you could just be like, hey, you want to collab? Great. But like, there's no relationship there. There's no real like connection there right and I, I i think that a lot of people do struggle with that and i think it's okay you know people aren't just naturally one day we can just have god's i don't know god's touch <laughs> and just talk to everyone be friends with everybody and everyone will <laughs> like us right um but that's not true it's a lot of effort and um i think for socializing sometimes we also like depending on our social battery. Some people's social battery is really low. Like I really, I have a really low social battery. <laughs> so like after a stream, I'm just done socializing for the day. <laughs> Usually, normally I'm just done. Um, but like in cases where people want to socialize after streaming, so like they're messaging people, thanking people or like doing all that little extra stuff or like going on social media, like it's so much socializing. So I think just figure out what kind of works for you and like your social battery level. Don't push yourself like beyond what you think you're capable of. So like, for example, like social media, like I'm sure you're, you're both on social media, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, it's a lot of like, if you want like a huge, like uh want more people to like you, you actually have to go on Twitter, scroll through Twitter, interact with people's posts, retweet their stuff, interact with their stuff, and then also uh, networking and reaching out to more people, right? Well, I think if you don't want to tire yourself out, just dedicate a amount of time to actually do it and just keep it within that time so then uh, <laughs> you don't over push yourself because I, I think that, at least for me, I'm constantly thinking about like, 
how I could uh, increase my my socialness without pushing my battery because like I get burnt out so easily like socially <laughs> and I, I'm sure like maybe for you too it might be a little different but like like how do you guys feel like your your social battery is like in general? I'll let Diana answer first, unless you need more time, in which case I can go. It's great! It's <laughs> Her eye twitch, that was real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. no, um, oh, god, okay, yeah, um, social battery for networking, very low, incredibly low. I find it so easy <laughs> to, to burn out. I, I think it's because, um, Every VTuber, I think, enhances a part of themselves when they stream, right? Mm. So, like, keeping up that, like, energy and that those good vibes is, like, it, it can be a little bit much, especially if you have a lot going on in, like, your regular life. So yeah. to add another layer of, like, keeping funny banter going while you're collabing with someone and also like like being entertaining yourself can it, it can be a lot and i find that particularly draining um but on the other side if it's in a casual setting i definitely charge around other people like in a in a casual setting i love hanging out with people it's so much fun like like i love hanging out with my like irl friends i go and play magic the gathering and other card related card games that I'm definitely not bad at. Listen, I know how to play Pokemon. I know how to play Pokemon. I know that you flip a coin. Really? So, I, I don't play know. Pokemon, so I don't know. Yeah, I, never have I, <laughs> like, I, I can't say never. I have, but I've long since forgotten. <laughs> Listen, I promise. I'm, I'm a reliable source here. I know how to tap my magics and cast my spells. But no, stuff like that I really enjoy doing, and it really does recharge me. But then there's other things, like even in my regular casual life, that kind of drains me. So it's like, mm. it's the curse of sometimes things are going to absolutely drain me socially and sometimes they're gonna charge me and it's like a, it's a coin flip baby and i'm <laughs> the most gambling dean you've ever seen sometimes so you know gotcha 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 baby oh, and God, help me. To, to build off that because i've definitely felt the like by category type thing there's also by person because there are some yes. people that just being around them will immediately drain social battery. And then there are others who are like, I could spend all day talking with this person and never feel drained at all. <laughs> so Big it is agree. Strong agree. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is very much one of those you have to find the people you vibe with and just learn to work those into it. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things I have found out is I am very much a like person who wants to make stuff. I want to create things. So if I involve people in that process and they are not the people that do not and they are the people that do not drain me, I am golden. I can socialize all day and be fine. Mm -hmm. But that said, if there are people that I don't know very well or like people I'm trying to reach out to the first time and like social network, I can't. <laughs> I, I have low social battery. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, are you, you I just, I just, I just, I just caught a laugh in my throat because I was like, that is the most relatable thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, I'm glad to know I'm relatable. <laughs> so, no, well, truly, I do not, I do not resonate with anything more. <laughs> yeah i just feel like in general socializing is a really big aspect of like life in general and just managing it is just figuring out your own personal social battery and what recharges you right before <laughs> getting yourself into another social setting that you're not really like fully willing or like used to i think if you're kind of used to something it gets a little bit easier right because like Hayano said, habits are easier to go through with because you do it every single day. It's like breathing. <laughs> you don't really <laughs> think about it. And then when you start thinking about it, you're like, oh, 
it feels weird <laughs> you know but like if it's something you don't really have to think about it becomes kind of second nature so i think um it's just a really important thing to just kind of build habits around socializing too and which involves your social battery mm-hmm. yeah 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 I, I feel like you asked a question at the start of that and I've already forgotten it. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> I had the question? <laughs> okay, everyone forgot it. That, that works. No, yeah, no. Great. Great. Everything's great. Everything's great. Yeah, don't worry about it, guys. <laughs> Milkshakes anyone? Milkshakes and keep but, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. To, to build off something we were saying before. Put some milkshakes um... around the table, please. <laughs> to, to build off something we were saying before about uh, scheduling socializing time that's actually one of the things that i've had to be very conscious of is uh, i have a boyfriend and i am very much the i will take on any project that interests me and i haven't had to tell myself and my boyfriend okay we need to pick a time that is just you time i cannot schedule any projects during that time because <laughs> uh, yeah, otherwise nice. it will be overshadowed <laughs> I, I will I do be that cool with shiny. my friends as well, actually. I, I do do with, that with my friends as well. <laughs> Glad I, to know I, I have to do that with that. my friends as well. Like, when you have so many friends, it's like, you need to start scheduling people, you know? And sometimes mm -hmm. some friends don't mix together, so you can't just, like, throw everyone together in, like, a bundle of friend group, you know? So... It's like you have to slowly integrate, like, a little schedule for everyone. And I remember somebody mm -hmm. just being like, like, why can't I just tell you the day of, like, are you free? And we'll just, like, go hang out. I'm like, sometimes I have to schedule it. Like, you, I'm sorry, but, like, yeah. I schedule things beforehand. I'm, like, so super busy. So, like, you can't just expect me to be free the day of, you know? <laughs> honestly, yeah. like, people who just do, spon like, spontaneous plans, I'm gonna be, like, really honest here. They stress me out so much. I'm like, <laughs> how do you do this? What are you doing? <laughs> Like, the only person who can do that to me is, like, my best best friend and, like, uh, my boyfriend. Like, those are the only two people that I'd be like, any time for you, baby, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's just always, like, I, I'm very much, like, someone who has to, like, schedule, like, everything in. I need to make a phone call to the doctors. It's scheduling time, baby. <laughs> when am I gonna do this? Because I am not gonna do this spon with any kind of spontaneity. This is not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I know and have spent ample waiting time in like waiting, you know, like when your brain is on like waiting time when you're waiting to do something. I don't know if this is just a neurodivergent thing or not, but like you have to like gas yourself up to like be ready to do it. And like you need to schedule that in as well. Do you uh, have like a like a physical calendar that you keep everything in? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I recommend trying. I've got a digital one. It is a godsend. I would otherwise have no idea what projects I'm supposed to be working on because I have too many. <laughs> um, I have digital. Okay, right. I'm a. I'm a be real with you and tell you a, an honest, homegrown truth. Um. I live and die by Edexcel, and I know that's like <laughs> really Excel. nerdy. Yeah, like like she like but Google Edexcel. Sheets. Mm -hmm. Oh, Google Sheets. Yeah, oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, I live and die by Google Sheets, and like Google Sheets and phone reminders. That's mm. it. <laughs> oh. I, I cannot knock you for that. I have I have delved deeply into Google Sheets before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I really sorry, sorry go ahead, ahead. no <laughs> <laughs> the politeness no it's time to curse us <laughs> no I was just wondering if you also have tried like Google Calendar because Anarchy in the chat here he says he, I will live and die by Google Calendar I actually, Agreed, I actually really love Google Calendar so, um, I don't like people telling me what to do. So, 
<laughs> so the idea of having something aggressively pop, and I know it's not aggressive, but aggressively pop up in my face? No. Be gone. Be gone. <laughs> Out of my sight. No, I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I, I have a negative reaction to like pop-ups and stuff telling me what to do. So I'm like, I'm going to fist a cuff you in the car parking lot if you don't stop <laughs> telling i know you're telling me for my own good but how how dare you so so basically uh, if i'm understanding how you're using excel right then you have basically just recreated a calendar in excel and use that because it doesn't pop up yeah <laughs> yep there you go <laughs> do you ever like so do you make a new google sheet every time or, or do you just like kind of reuse it so, um, I have different template Google Sheets. Oh god, hmm. this is starting to sound so <laughs> goddamn nerdy. Oh my god. <laughs> right, I have template Google Sheets based on what tasks I need to do. And then I just create a duplicate sheet within that same folder. Um, mm. And then rename it whatever I need to name it. Because you can have multiple like sheets active in the same Google Sheet like file. So everything yeah, is like renamed and in the same thing. And then once I'm completely done with something, I will delete it. E.g. I have like my entire like semester spends divvied up in a Google Sheet for week on week and how much I'm allowed to spend each week and like any of the financial things I need to take into account. I just continuously add it to the sheet, duplicate it oh. when there's a new like term and then work from there. I actually kind of like that you kind of brought up like the financial side of it. Does any of that kind of evolve like your streaming? No, 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 no. I, I never take that into account whatsoever because um, I'm very part, like I said, I'm very part time streamer. So whenever mm -hmm. people do donate, it goes into a completely separate fund that is just stuff that kind of re goes into the stream itself. Mm. Hmm. I, I, I have that same set up as well, and I definitely stand by that is the right way to do it. If you yeah, want to yeah, make yeah. sure that like streaming stays streaming. Yeah, I'm fortunate enough right now that between like classes and stuff, I I don't really have to like worry about like 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 streaming like making a living off of streaming mm. right now. Yeah. Very like fortunate for that. Um, but it is something I'm gonna have to like consider in the future, and it stresses me out because I'm like, oh Aww. no. I mean, one one recommendation I can make as someone who has kind of thought about it before: one of the things that you should focus on first before even thinking about uh, streaming to like live off of is mm -hmm. just think of it as a hobby that pays for itself. Many mm -hmm. people don't even have that. <laughs> yes. I, I, I genuinely think I'm in quite a fortunate position because it's, it, it's, like I said, it's, it's really, it's really fortunate to even like be like any kind of like affiliate or like making money off of any of these sites really. Very true. Especially like, like, isn't, I don't know what the statistic is, but it's a really low statistic that like you even get to make money off of these sites. So oh. it, it always like it's always one of those oh that's i'm incredibly fortunate so incredibly fortunate and i i think every single like streamer i've spoken to like echoes the exact same thing mm. so i i think it's like a it's like a it's like a very well-known thing of like hey yeah un until like you get that really big lucky thing it's like you should treat it moderately and you should always make sure every as much as you can goes back into like funding it itself, you know? Yeah. That's just my personal opinion, but please don't cancel me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one's gonna cancel you. No, I, yeah, I no. definitely agree with that. I think I'm also uh, on the more fortunate side. Like a lot of people sometimes like life gets busy, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. you have life come up and things like that and I do notice that if you don't stream consistency consistently you lose your audience unfortunately but that just yes. kind of comes to streaming because they come by they they stick around because it's kind of like ongoing entertainment for them right mm -hmm. um 
but then once you're away you're just gone they think that you've just poofed out of existence <laughs> uh, yeah. or like they kind of move on to other streamers right mm -hmm. so i think that if you have an audience that stays i think you're also really lucky in that sense too yeah viewers have yeah, no yeah. object permanence is basically what i'm hearing from roku <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> i don't know I, I i there's a lot of people who do come back but <laughs> Excuse me. So it's, it takes a while for it right? to come back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it takes a, it, it. It's really interesting, right? Because I, I think about this a lot, and I think VTubing is one of those things that I, I think really like. So, I hate to use the word parasocial, but oh, we're going into this a little bit. Just oh, I love that. Bit. Yeah, talk more um, about parasocial just a little bit because we're going to have to back on topic it's a tiny bit um it, it's it's we have a very unique like um back and forth with our viewers as vtubers they're like a lot more a part of our content than a lot of other like different strands of content creators so like that i th i think that's usually why if you're kind of gone for a long period it can kind you can kind of struggle to get back into that kind of habitual back and forth um and and that's the thing as as someone who kind of drops off the face of the earth a couple of times <laughs> uh, you, you kind of get used to like starting from like day one you know and yeah. I, I think there's something nice about that, but it's also like a when you do see one of those like viewers that comes back, I guarantee like most like like I want to say moderate level VTubers they don't forget. They 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 might not mention it, but they don't forget, and it, it means the world to them deep down. Yep, I agree. Though, so, uh, since we've brought up the topic of, like, long breaks between streaming and how that's not good, and I know streaming every day is absurd and, <laughs> like, okay. too much for some people, so how do you know how much you can stream and how do you, like, time management streaming itself versus, like, prepping for a stream? It's, it's a hard one. It's definitely a hard one. I, I think personally if i'm doing so i put different streams into different categories again we're, we're back with categories wonderful um <laughs> no i love the way you kind of categorize yes. everything because it just kind of make it more organized so it makes a lot of sense yeah so like with with i i think video game streams are usually some of the the least like like just just straight you are playing a video game i think they are some of the like the the kind of easier easier in quotation marks streams to to set up and kind of prepare for right because you've yeah. got the game you've got generally what you're going to do in the game i think you should always kind of go in with a general idea of what kind of game you're playing mm -hmm. and what you're going to be doing in it and then what I tend to do is I'll come up with a list of like little topics that I want to touch on. Um, but I'm I'm very much an improv person, so mm. between you want like, it to come general, naturally, right? Yeah, yeah. I think just writing that down, even if you're not necessarily looking at like while you're streaming, it kind of helps you kind of get into that mindset of. These are the things I, as a VTuber, need to touch on. These, this is the more professional mentality side of it that I need to be addressing every time I step into the skin of a VTuber. <laughs> <laughs> while, like, I think, like, event streams, while they're, like, way, they, they can be, like, way more fun and way more things that, like, you're passionate about, they take longer to set up because, yeah. like, you have like lots of different moving pieces and vtubers have a lot of different moving pieces if they're working on any kind of project in the background to begin with so like weighing up if a stream is reasonably possible while still like wanting to give the best for your viewers is something that i think kind of like dwells like something that like a lot of vtubers end up dwelling on i think the main thing is is if it's if it's something you want to do, 
I, I feel like you've got to also allocate for that because you can do streams for like like your viewers and you can do that kind of general catered content but you also have to make the content you want to make because otherwise you will burn out and you won't have fun with it anymore. Mm -hmm. I know uh, that. building off that one method that I used before was uh, I know Twitch has the like community point kind of thing where you can have something with a really high point value and everyone has to chip in on it. Doing that for uh, a one where it's like, okay, challenge? yeah, community challenge for uh, community gets to vote on the next game I play kind of thing. And you have a running list of games people have previously suggested is one method I've used before. So then it's very much the, I, I am listening to the community, I'm doing what you guys suggest, but you have to chip in for it kind of thing. You, you have yeah, to yeah. earn it. <laughs> Yeah. So there, there are definitely methods of like organizing how often you're doing it and primarily focusing on the stuff that makes you happy, which I advocate for primarily focus on that. Yeah. And I, I know, Roku, you have the horror game redeem. Uh, don't remind my audience, please. <laughs> 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 it's something I want to forget as well. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what it is. Every time I make an amazing redeem for my audience where I think it was going to be a fun idea, <laughs> they, they, they tend to milk it. And then whenever I try to take away the redeem, my audience gets really upset about it. <laughs> that, that just shows yeah. that you're designing the redeems that are too good. You're doing too good a job at it. You know, I just, for me, I love, like, making new content all the time. Like, I hate the idea that if you come to my stream, it's the same every time. Like, I like making new redeems, changing it up, maybe mixing it up a little bit. New game, new, like, layout, layout changes. And, like, I try to change something every single stream because I just, I, myself, feel like if something is stale, my passion is gone for it, you know? That just means... I'm dead at that point and I don't want that to die. So I usually mm -hmm. change it up and mix it up. So it was just inevitably became one of the things I <laughs> ended up adding <laughs> that everybody mm -hmm. wants to stay now. Yeah. Just have an increase in price before they get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No complain about the price increase though. <laughs> I mean, but they're the ones driving it. I know. It's already I, 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 8,000 and like somehow every single week somebody redeems it. I'm like, how did you get 8,000 points in one week? Get out. <laughs> they take turns on it. They take turns on it. They do. They do. And it's so evil. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sorry. Uh, getting back on topic a little bit. Um, uh, shoot, there's something I really wanted to talk about that I. What was it? Sorry, I lost train of thought. <laughs> You're good, you're good. Um, yeah, I actually really don't remember what it was. <laughs> do, do you remember anything about, like, direction or... Uh, well, we just went in, like, this huge tangent, and it was yeah. like, something right before that tangent that we were discussing that came to thought, and then it just, uh... it, it's gone now. <laughs> the, so we talked about the, uh, your horror games... The uh, community challenge points, yeah. uh, playing stuff that, or playing or doing things that you want to do and focusing primarily on that. Oh, right. Okay, great. <laughs> That's actually something that I wanted to talk about as well. Um, it, if you want to do something that you like in both your audience and you like, uh, what I tend to do is I look at my numbers. So I actually look at, Twitch has done a great job upgrading this because uh, I don't know if you guys ever use the, the Twitch, but like the Twitch summary, the numbers, they actually help me a lot to kind of gauge like the engagement with my audience and what, mm -hmm. like how many people are watching at what time and what, you know, what's the most engaging content for people. Um, I tend to actually find that my just talking streams do a lot better than like any uh, anything else really, and I don't understand right. why. <laughs> that, I I feel like yeah, I that's something that I've noticed a, a fair amount, right? It's it's 
it's interesting. I, I don't know. I'd love to hear from like more VTubers and see if that's like a like a consistent thing. Yeah, like, because then I'll start for... playing the game and like everyone starts leaving. I'm like, where are you going? <laughs> 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 or like it, it at the end of my gaming streams i usually have a little bit of just talking and then people come back and i'm like where were you <laughs> um it always makes me stuff like that does make me wonder though of like i wonder if like when it gets to the gaming if they're like lurking at that point like they minimize their ta tab or something mm. and start doing something else in the background because just chatting is really it, like back and forth engaging right because you're like physically talking to people mm. but with gaming it's like something they kind of set off to the side and like watching the background like i i feel like that's something that i mean i do it a fair amount so <laughs> really for this. So, i'm yeah. wondering if like that's that that's too. the thing of like <laughs> like maybe like people minimize it or put it off to the side and like maybe it just doesn't count the view sometimes mm. i, I think I mean? so too i think that like with uh certain types of contents it's just more engaging than other content i think just particularly with my gaming content i'm not that strong of a gamer so you're not gonna see like pro gamer skills for me there's nothing like really super <laughs> interesting to watch maybe like my bad reactions to like jump scares or like <laughs> My struggles is a little bit funny, but like for the most part, like I'm not really a strong kind of gamer analyzer, like mm -hmm. slash narrator during a gameplay. So I completely understand too. Mm. I feel like games are like, like if you're not like coming from that like place of like commentating, like you don't have like an extensive background in game commentate commentation, it commentation commentating. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it kind of. <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to like because you've got to find an, an angle for it right it's one of those things you've got to find an angle for you've either got to be good at the game you've got to be really funny and like committing to the bits you're selling basically and or or you've got to like be really informational because that's that's the the big three i think that kind of most people kind of stick to one or the other right so it, it's 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 really difficult in that way to like if you don't come from that background to then tailor your content to that background i think that comes a lot from the unique experience of what a vtuber like their, their first experience of a game is mm. but like i i think like generally within the gaming community that there, there's like a lot of 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 love for those particular free avenues and unlike mm. like more like scripted content that you can like do if you're doing a video on a game you, you can't script the stream like you can script a stream like like to a certain extent but if you're just playing a game you're not going to be scripting like what you're saying exactly while you're playing the game so it's just a mm. different skill set that you slowly have to develop over time i think mm. I agree. Um, since we're kind of coming closer to the end of our show here, um, I was just wondering uh, if we could just summarize some of the things that were really important um, during this podcast. So, um, Ayano, is there any like final words or summaries that you would like to give to our audience or about the podcast? Yeah, I think, I think when you're trying to find like a time management thing for things you're passionate about and also things you might not be passionate about everything in moderation you know you need to allocate time for yourself but you also need to allocate time to spend with other people to spend with your loved ones and to to do what you want to do because any anything in too much is in kind of a bad thing but the only person who's really gonna suffer from it is you because you're not gonna be able to do the things you want to do and i i've been there and i get it so if you if you come away with this podcast from with with anything i think it's it's always worth it to give things a go and if that's picking up pomodoro 
body doubling, socializing, taking more productive, in quotation mark, breaks. Whatever it is, give it a go. Why not? And also calendars. And if you don't like pop-ups, Excel. <laughs> Excel. Yeah. Excel. Excel for you and Excel for me. <laughs> and uh, is there anything you want to summarize for yourself? Any final words, uh, Kat? Uh, I think Hayano has covered most of it. I, I think the thing that I do probably need to try is Pomodoro, given that I am very project runaway type. <laughs> so I, I will definitely be looking into that more. Uh, and then uh, the other thing I want to stress is don't forget to schedule your freaking breaks if you're a person like I am. Like, I I have days where I've forgotten to schedule dinner. I need to fix that, because I will forget <laughs> about dinner. No! <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Definitely don't do that. We are professionals. We, 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 we do not recommend you do these activities at home. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Roku? Um, for me personally, I think Hayana also summarized a lot of what I wanted to say as well um because <laughs> those are a lot of amazing points that you made today i definitely think i learned from that too is uh that point of just having a timer because i am totally <laughs> a little bit yep. of a mess of a person sometimes but somehow it still works <laughs> um but i think also um having appropriate like resting breaks and what you do during those breaks are also like super important and kind of like laying out like your time a little bit because you need to make time for things if you're especially a busy person if and even if you're not a busy person i think it's also still important to have like a time and schedule for things too because when i'm like uh, not doing anything i feel like my day is just like like a blur <laughs> you know like have you ever experienced that where you just like there's nothing to do all day you don't have anything scheduled yet but like you just kind of feel like that day is a blur yeah yeah definitely yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I i know exactly what you mean it's like ah i'm gonna spend today rest I, I i don't have much on today maybe i'll like spend today resting or doing something and you look at the clock and it's like, like 5 p.m and you're like oh what the God. heck has happened yeah but especially if it's a day where you are just streaming a show or something yeah. that day is gone <laughs> do you know what we say about those days those what? days are, are are like the ones that you you give up to your brain because sometimes <laughs> your brain will override you tell you you've been doing too much and that is the brain tax remember to pay your brain <laughs> tax <kids. laughs> I love that brain tax. <laughs> well, you heard it here, folks. Brain tax, okay? <laughs> okay, and I think that kind of summarizes our show for today. Um, thank you, Hayano, for being our guest for today. You were absolutely lovely. Oh, it's been a genuine honor. I, I genuinely, it's been so fun to talk about this stuff because I'm really passionate about it, stupidly passionate about it. No, but I like, love it. Genuinely, you, thank you. That is thank amazing. You. Well, we we'll <laughs> hope to have you again, so you'll have to make some time for us, okay? <laughs> yes, manage that time. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here and thank you anarchy for being our small one mr small ones and yep. being the backstage guy <laughs> and and have we picked who we are going to raid i see anarchy has already started posting the raid messages okay yes my, my zona. zona okay excellent copy the raid message guys yep. thank copy you for joining raid. us today we'll see you on the next episode of Small, Small cast. cast. <laughs> we did it. Bye bye. We've still got like ten seconds until the rain goes through. Yeah, let's say bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye, -bye. Uh, can I? Can I touch your horn? Ooh. Oh wait. Can I? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yay! <laughs> we can touch yeah. the hyena. No, 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 no. You, you can touch my tail. Wait. Hold on. There we go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah! <laughs>
my life is complete now. <laughs>